Welcome back to Upside Down Data. We need to talk about Chainlink. If you're not familiar, Chainlink started out mainly as a data oracle, bringing outside data in so that blockchains can use it. But they have since branched out to other areas. One of the more prominent and promising areas is their cross-chain communications, basically enabling any blockchain to communicate directly with any other blockchain. And since the election, Chainlink's native token, Link, has been waking up. You'll see that off of that point, we rallied as high as 169% to the upside, quite nice. Now, what I wanna focus in on first here is this sell-off. I think a lot of people may have seen this, especially people newer to crypto or newer to Link, see it drop 15% in a day and get really worried, say, oh no, what's happening? Is a crash coming? Are we about to go down, down, down further? So I wanna first talk about that, and then where is Link going in the more medium to longer timeframes? So first off, when you see a candle like this, and especially when you see this in a bull market, the, often the cause of this is what's called a liquidation cascade. So what does that mean? Well, it has to do with people taking on leverage, betting on the market going up or down. So if you're betting that the market's gonna go up, you're long, betting on it going down, you're short, just to give some terminology. So what happens when people take out leverage positions is that they have a certain price at which if the market goes too far against them, so if you were long on link, betting on it going up, there's a certain point where if it falls too far, your position is now underwater. Your position is now worth less than the collateral you use to back up that loan that you took basically to try and bet on the price going up. If that happens, your position is then forced sold. So you're betting on it going up, it market went against you. Now everything just gets forced sold onto the market. That adds more selling pressure. And the idea is that if there are a bunch of people who are doing that, then as price goes down and more and more forced selling happens, it'll make other people's long positions get liquidated and so on and so forth. And that's this liquidation cascade where basically everyone's liquidation is causing forced selling, triggering other people to liquidate. And then that's when you'll tend to see these big wicks to the downside, which then get bought up and you get you kind of get this bounce back up to a more reasonable position and we can actually just look directly at this happening so this is on over on coinalize and they actually have these charts for link where you can actually look at liquidations both on the long side and on the short side what you can see is in this move down there was a huge spike here in liquidations that were happening at least relative to the near past and so that is really what is behind this you can just look at that and say okay that makes sense now there is going to be some other organic selling that's happening here as people maybe get worried and maybe panic sell and things like that but the real reason you see these big drops is because of liquidations and because of leverage but this is actually a healthy dynamic in bull markets the market can only sustain so much leverage you know if the market's going up you can only sustain so many levered long positions before ultimately some kind of a correction needs to happen some kind of flushing out of that leverage needs to take place before it can then get to a more healthy spot then have more organic demand drive price back up you want people buying spot link driving it up you don't just want a bunch of people going on leverage to try to push it up that's not very sustainable and makes it vulnerable to these really dramatic crashes like you can see here so this is not unexpected from that perspective that's the main thing i want to talk about for this first part of the video and at this point, I am not panicking. I know, obviously, people just want things to go up in a straight line. It's not the way it works in markets. You have these moments. But if you know they can happen and you're looking out for them, it helps you not get overly emotional. It helps you not panic sell right at the bottom of one of these liquidation wicks, for example. So let's go ahead now and zoom out a little bit more. I want to talk about where is Link heading off of these levels. And to do that, I want to talk about some of our models and what they're seeing about with Chainlink. So this is our short-term upside downside potential indicator. It's a risk model that we have here at the channel and at our website, partydigital.io. Link in the description if you wanna go check that out for yourself. High values mean high risk, low values mean low risk, and it cares what moves that play out over days to weeks, so shorter in this time horizon. And one of the things that you'll notice with this model, it does a very good job of identifying when the market is starting to get risky and you're likely to get some kind of a correction, and also when it's a low risk and you're likely to see some moves up. Now, notably, where we are right now, you'll notice that risk has really shot off to the upside. You'll see it here, just really shooting up with this move up, this 170 almost percent move to the upside. Short-term risk really catapulted up almost to the top of the scale. And so there, it makes total sense that we bumped our head here. 
makes total sense that Link slowed down up and around these levels at around 27, 25, this general area, and they were having some kind of a correction and consolidation here. Now, this might be frustrating to a lot of people because it felt like Link was just getting started. You've seen other assets put in many larger multiples than this, but the model is saying, well, this is what we could have expected right now. This was it realizing a lot of that short-term outside potential, and now it actually is a good thing that it's cooling off consolidating that'll let short-term risk cool off back down to the downside, set the stage back for that next move up. And Link to some degree has done that throughout its entire life. You'll notice with Link in the last cycle, for example, it wasn't really just a one big parabolic move and then a collapse like other assets kind of do. It's more a up and to the right, but with a lot of volatility. Kind of a, almost more of a steady move, kind of just like basically a linear line you can just draw through here rather than the big parabola that you'll see with other assets. And so therefore you might expect that it might do something similar this cycle, that we have some big initial move up like we've seen. Maybe we have to then consolidate, kind of correct, chop around a bit. Then we have that next big move up, chop around, consolidate, the next move up. But what you're not seeing is the massive swings that you'll have these sideways consolidation periods that can be quite volatile, but you're not coming up here, then diving all the way down here, and then coming up here, then diving all the way down here. It's kind of a slow and steady move up, which does actually set Link's price action apart but also makes it so that people I think can kind of get frustrated with it because it doesn't act like some of those other assets. And so it's really up to you. If, you know, if you don't think that something like this is something that you're in for, you don't have to look at Link. If you don't think that this kind of price action is something that you can stomach, you don't have to look at it. And there's no guarantee it does that again. You know, it could go on a big parabolic run this time, but just know that it's done that before. And if it does that again, it will look something like what it's looking like right now. And don't be shocked about it. And I think a lot of people just get upset because they don't really even think about that. They just think, why isn't it the most, the best performing asset all the time? It's just not the way it works. Frankly, Link is rarely the best performing asset in any kind of short-term time frame in the last cycle, but overall, it was a very, very good performing asset. So it's useful to keep that all in context. Okay, so that's the short-term UDPI. I want to flip over now to the long-term UDPI and see where that sits. So this is a similar to the short-term in what it's looking at, but it's looking at moves that play over months to multiple months, so longer in its time horizon. And you also see that it got quite elevated. Now, not as elevated as we got back over here when we kind of got to the top of this big move and then ultimately had this correction down before we're now moving up again. But it did move up pretty notably. But what's important about us slowing down here is you'll notice that long-term risk is also slowed down here. And what will happen is if we continue consolidating here or correct a bit more, you're pricing long-term risk roll over as well. And that can be good also because the more you kind of get up to these really high-risk points, the more that you're getting closer to the end of the cycle. Now, it doesn't need to mean that you're at the cycle top. You know, you'd see back here in August of 2020, we got all the way up above four, which is almost to the top of the scale. Then we had this cooling off, and then we went and actually ended up putting in the all-time high. You like to see that on this model, or even back here, we got up to about the same level we're right now, kind of really came down, then ultimately did that later. We'd like to see this kind of cool off, come down a little bit, or at the very least not just shoot off all the way up here, and that'll actually give more room to work with to the upside overall in this cycle than if we just went straight up. Even though everyone wants the prices to go straight up, if it did that, we would probably not get to as high of a price in this market cycle as if we have a more healthy move up. That's the way the markets tend to work. If you go up too fast, too quickly, you actually have a lower ceiling than if you do it in a slower, more reasonable way. That's the way that these things tend to work. And that's what I'd like to see here again. Long-term risk slowing down here, like you see that continue and actually drop a bit, basically accrue more long-term upside potential, and then go realize that later as we ultimately push into whatever the cycle top will be. Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about here is actually some on-chain data. So that's actually something that makes our website, partydigital.io, unique versus a lot of other sites that are out there. So we actually have on-chain data for Chainlink, and it can provide some very, very useful insights. So what I'm showing you here is the realized network profit and loss for Link. And basically what that means is on any given day, how much profit is being realized, basically profit being taken, versus losses being realized, people taking losses. So you'll notice that in bull markets, there are these points where people are taking a lot of profits up towards the highs. In bear markets, as you're getting to the bottom, the capitulation, selling in deep loss at the bottoms. This is the way that markets always tend to go. Now, what we can do here is this is denominated in USD. What, I, what we can actually do is we can denominate it 
over here in link. So that's this formula one, basically just dividing the uh, USD amount of profit or loss by the price of links. So and now we're basically looking at what quantity of link are being sold in profit, quantity of link sold in loss is basically what you're looking at here. But then what we can do is we actually look at it over time. So what I'm doing here with formula two is actually just a simple moving average, a 90 day simple moving average. So basically three months. We're just looking at over a three month period, how much profit or loss on net is the market taking? And what you'll see is that in these kind of peaking points of the market, you tend to see a lot of profit being taken above zero here, a lot of profit being realized. Then going into the capitulation in the bear market, a lot of losses being realized. Then in this first run up, we again saw a good amount of profit being taken, similar to these kind of levels before that marked those topping up points. And indeed, then we had a correction that actually had people selling at a loss as we got down to the bottom here. And now we're ticking back up into the profit zone. So you can sustain profit for a little bit, but it tends to, at least for Link, historically speaking, you'll tend to see some volatility around those big spikes. So I think that we could have more room to go here, right? And so that's another reason why I'm not super concerned. And especially if Link starts showing some weakness here or consolidating, you might actually not really see this move up all that much more. And it's really only once we start getting up to these higher levels, you might want to get more concerned. So that's the other thing. That's if Link just spends more time consolidating or correcting here, you actually might hold in check how many people are going to be trying to take profit on it. They might decide to wait a little bit longer, maybe for the next time it moves up and then do it. And that basically just removes some selling pressure and you'll end up actually being in a better spot than if you just shot up and then a bunch of people take profit and you have a big crash that follows afterwards. So that's where when I'm looking at Link overall, what I'm seeing right now is an asset that really did in the short term at least need to cool off and might need to cool off more. I know no one wants to hear that, but again, this is short term. If ultimately you think we're somewhere back here and we're heading here, then who cares in the short term what happens? And that's what I'm looking at here. Short term, Link needs to cool off. Longer term, also good that it's slowing down because we don't want long term risking too high too quickly. But that's also good for its long term outlook. Profit taking wise, we've seen the first big spike. We want to delay the second and third big spikes as much as possible. We want people basically to sit on their link, wait for higher prices to sell. Consolidation correction might entice them not to pull the trigger just yet, and then keep this in check so you don't get too much selling pressure too quickly. So ultimately, this might be all in service of link heading higher. And really, I just want to make this point one more time. Let's look at the last cycle. When we look at this, we just gloss over all this volatility to say, oh yeah, that was just a straight line up more or less. That was just great bull market, beautiful bull market, where if you would have just bought down at the bottom here, let's just say you bought somewhere down around here, held to the top, you'd be sitting in massive profit, you know, 12,000% move to the upside overall. Man, that was so easy back then. They got so lucky that they were aware of Link and buying it at the time. But if you were actually living through this, just think of how incredibly difficult it would have been to have bought here and just never gotten worried this whole time. Look at all this volatility you would have had to stomach. You think that's easy? That's not easy. And so any emotion that you're feeling right now with Link correcting 15%, they went through way more of that. And of course, we just ignore that and say, oh, well, it was obvious Link was just going to go up here. You know, it feels a lot more real when you're experiencing it in real time. But if that's where we're heading on some big bull market, we do the same thing with what we're seeing right now. We'd go back in time and look at it, just a blip on the radar that doesn't really mean much. Now, does that mean you should just ignore everything that's happening right now? No, absolutely not. The data turned decisively bearish, it'll be important to turn bearish. But for me, one day of a 15% drawdown is not nearly enough to flip from bullish to bearish, at least in that longer term time frame. I think more would need to happen more. We need to see more from the market to tell us, OK, this is now starting to look something more like this rather than just looking like this volatility that is extremely normal in bull markets. So there you have it. That's my overall takeaway with Link. Overheating in the short term makes total sense it's correcting. But longer term, I'm not ready to pull the plug just yet. All right, if you like the content, or subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X, a lot of updates on our models and more over there. You can go to our website, PlarityDigital.io, to see live data for our models and more.